Hello, thank you for joining us. This is We Become Church. I am Alan. Uh, this is my wife, uh, Tori. And we are, as we mention each week, we want people to know and not forget, we are We Become Church. And we are doing this because we believe and we know that God has a specific and unique plan and purpose for each and every individual person. God has allowed you to be born into this time, into this life, it's because he has a specific plan and purpose just for you. And he desires you to see it through to completion. And he has equipped you with what you need to see it through to completion. So we are We Become Church. You can find out more about us at our website, www.webecomechurch.org. And it has um, all of our social media links, uh, church email, church phone number, uh, ways you can get in contact with us if you need to. Uh, if you have prayer requests as well, that's the way to contact us. Um, so we've been in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, last week we covered um, light, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Uh, so this week we'll move on to the next few verses. So I'll open us up in prayer. My wife will get started with a review. <clears throat> Excuse me. Father God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for allowing us to be able to do this uh, live stream Bible study. Thank you for this opportunity and this privilege. And we pray the things that we've been discussing, been doing, been covering are beneficial to all those who see it. And most of all, we pray that it's pleasing to you. As we always pray, we pray people aren't just hearers, hearers of the word. They don't just take in information without the intention of applying the information to their life and to their situation. But I pray this is beneficial and it would motivate and encourage people to pursue you and seek after you and to discover exactly what the plan and purpose is you have for them. And we thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, Matthew 5, 14 says, you are the light of the world. Oh, is that where we were? That's where we were last week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. So we kind of talked about what light is. I think we started getting into 15 too, but I don't remember. Anyway, so just as a recap of what light is, um, it was more scientific last week. So I know the audio probably wasn't good. Um, the video probably wasn't good, but the audio should have been okay. Um, we had a lot of internet issues last week. Yeah, technical difficulties. <laughs> um, so this is just to review. This isn't the whole um, lesson. It's just kind of like a, a recap of it. So if you have questions about it, go back and watch last week. Um, or you can shoot us a text, whatever, um, email, we're here. So we talked about light um, and that light radiates outward from a source. So light isn't something that just happens. Light is like a secondary thing or like an effect of something that caused it. So if light, the same way that light radiates from a source, um, when Jesus is telling us that we are the light of the world, we're to be his radiation. Um, we talked about things that are radiant, and the definition that I kind of made up is an extension of an impact um, of the original, whatever that thing is, thing, stimulus, to a more distant location. So we talked about like um, like an oven or a stove or anything hot. You know, a fire is hot, but you can feel the heat when you're away from it. Um, the heat is radiating. It's coming from it. And so the same way you can feel the effects of the fire, even though you're not literally touching the flames, the same way that... Um, light's effect radiates it comes out from the source and it brings the light's effect to other places where the light isn't directly at um and so us as light we radiate from that source that source is christ and so we should show his impact we should bring his presence into places that we are um when we're in a room in a situation and whatever within our lives within the world that he put us in that's why it says of the world we're here to be his reflection, a radiation coming from him. Um, and with light, um, the farther you get away from it, the less the effects are. So we talked about like with headlights, you can see what's right in front of you, but you know, if you're down a long or winding road, you can't tell if it curves or bends, that's why you put your high beams on or whatever it is that you do. But the further you are away from the light, the less um, effective that light is. And so the same way we need to stay close to our source. We need to stay close to God 
um, continue to have his word poured into us, continue to seek his face, to stay in close communication with him, so that way we can be effective. So that way we are um, a high being. <laughs> we have a good representation of his presence. Um, because the farther we get away from him, the weaker our relationship is with him, the less effective we are going to be as lights. Amen. Um, yeah, so that leads us into this week. Um, previous verses talking about salt, and we kind of covered what is salt, what salt does, benefits of salt, attributes of salt, talked about light, um, attributes of light. And uh, 15 and 16 kind of, you know, talks about if salt loses its saltiness, what good is it? But verse 15, reading from the Amplified, starts, I mean, this is after 14. So you are the light of Christ to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket. So uh, this goes along with salt. What good is salt if it loses its saltiness? What good is light if it's hidden? It might as well not even shine like if light is hidden well enough you can't see it so it's like it's not functioning in its intended role and purpose so we don't want to and one one of the thoughts i had um don't hide or or dim your light and you know but we allow the light of christ to shine through us there's nothing we can do to dim christ but if he's shining through us, you think of light shining through something, you can make it grimy and dirty. <laughs> you think of like um, this time of year, uh, winter in New England, you know, like today, there's snow, sleet, rain, some places got hail. So your windshield gets a lot of grime, it gets wet, then salt and dirt and different things get thrown up onto it. It gets hard, if you didn't turn your wipers on, it'd be hard to see through it. But it can be the same thing with us. If we are to allow the light of Christ shine through us, there are things we can allow to stick to us, attach to us, kind of soil us, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> that can hinder the light, hinder the light and its ability to kind of shine through us. Like we talked about the attributes of salt. One of the attributes is salt is transparent. Light will pass through it. We want the light of Christ to pass through us, but sometimes we can have things that are hindering the light from shining as brightly as it could, if that makes sense. Um, and I heard another pastor uh, online, YouTube, uh, talking about this, and he was saying, salt and light represent our identity. This is who we are to be in Christ. And it's like we talked about, Jesus says you are the light of the world you are the salt of the earth he didn't say you will become in time with much prayer and study and whatever he says you are and so he was saying like this is identity and it kind of it, it makes sense when you think about it but then you think about you know today's you know we have and i'm not going to get too much into this i'm just using it in one area um we have all kinds of bathrooms. People can use whatever bathroom they identify with. So, and my thought to that is, um, what exactly did I say? Identity determines behavior. So, if you identify as a certain way, you function a certain way. So, if you identify as a certain whatever, again, I'm not trying to get into all that. If you identify as a male, you use the men's room. If you identify as a woman, you use the woman's room. But how you identify yourself determines your action, your behavior. I identify myself as a male, so I go into the men's room and use the men's room. So identity determines behavior. And if we are the salt, we are the salt and light of the earth, of this world, and if we know that and believe that, it should determine our behavior. We should It should cause us to behave in a certain way. Just like knowing that I am a male and I'm going to use the male facilities, that determines my action when I need to use the restroom. 
in somewhere else other than my home. So us being the salt and the light of the, of the of this earth, knowing that should cause us to behave and act in a certain way. Um, and also too, salt and light have a purpose. And the purpose of salt is for it to be salty. The purpose of light is for it to shine. So if salt isn't salty and light is being covered or hidden, it's not functioning in its intended role and in, and, in, 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 and in its intended purpose. So if we are the light of Christ, but we're doing things to dim our light, to hide our light, you know, sometimes people hide their lights. They act a certain way when they get around a certain, you, you know, you hear people say you act one way on Sunday and another, another way on Monday. But we shouldn't behave in a way that our light is, is dim or hindered. We should want our light to shine so that people, and it gets into it uh, in verse 16. It says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see how good looking you are. How, <laughs> how well spoken you are. No, it says, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good deeds and moral excellence. Recognize and honor and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light so shine that people can look at you and see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So it's not for us. It isn't for us. And it's kind of funny because um, chapter 6 of this book, Jesus talks about um, like not kind of not doing things to draw attention to yourself. I'm actually going to just find it. Oh, the praying and everything? Yeah. But Jesus talks about not doing things to draw attention to yourself, not not making people, you know, when you do good things, when you help the needy, you you give to the poor, you know, you you give to the to the homeless, you give to these causes. Don't say, "Oh, hey, look what I did. I just gave this homeless person twenty dollars, or I just gave this family in need uh, a, a turkey dinner." And he's saying this not to say like. Um, don't do good works because people you don't want people to know what you're doing. It's the heart behind it. You're not doing it for recognition. You're doing it because you have a heart to help people. You're doing it because you want to glorify your father. You want people to look at you and not see you and not be fixated on you. You, you want to, re well, our job is to reflect the light of Christ. So when people look at us and see whatever good it is that we do, and it's only because of him that we're even capable of doing any good, you want people to look at you and see him. That's that's the the reason for for doing. You know, let your lights shine so in such a way that men see your good deeds and moral excellence. And recognize and honor and glorify your Father who is in heaven. And we do it for his glory, for his honor. So people would come to the, ultimately so people would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because that's, that's the end goal. We don't desire people to just live good lives and die and go to hell. We want people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Acknowledge him as Lord and Savior. And as, as a result, have a right to eternal life. So what good is salt if it isn't salty? What good is light if it's hidden or covered? When we don't allow the light of Christ or the salt that we are to function in the way that God has designed and intended them to function, where Miles Monroe used this term a lot, we're, we're malfunctioning. We're, we're not functioning as God has intended us to function. He desires for us to allow his light to shine through us so that people would see him and be drawn to him. Amen. Do you have any thoughts? Or... Um, nope. <laughs> I think you, you pretty much said it all. Um, you know, that our, our purpose and our goal should be to glorify God. And so a way we can do that is being salt and being light in you know, whatever situation that we're in, um, you know, whether you're 
in a in a good situation in a good season you know um being generous being kind if things aren't going great um you know it's not to say that you have to be superhuman but to be mindful to put yourself second um and put god first so you even if you don't have the funds to be generous you can still be kind what, what does a smile cost you mm. you know um or listening to someone else putting others needs before yourself um and again it's not about a checklist but it's about who you are i gave um a story one time about something that happened to me i was driving and stuff and um i was getting really frustrated and annoyed and i was getting in a bad way <laughs> And um, because I was getting in a bad way and I was um, all up in my feelings, I was not being nice. <laughs> and um, God spoke to me and he said, don't let what you're in affect who you are. And so, again, it's not just about, you know, how close are you tailgating or how fast you were or were not driving. I plead the fifth. But it's about um, not letting external things change your internal being um and so it's like when i took on that attitude when i had that behavior when you know because it wasn't just you know oh i'm trying to get from a to b but it's like you know i, I viewed things differently and i was letting it affect my behavior um and so god had to check me and he was like hey like <laughs> what you're doing um is not reflective of who you are and so um, I had to, you know, like course correct and be like, you know what, like this is, this is not okay. Um, I had to see that. I had to, you know, kind of get closer to that source, you know, and not just be relying on my own, you know, opinions or thoughts or feelings or, you know, um, because we can feel entitled. We can think that, okay, well, you know, because this is going on, I have a right to feel this way. And you have a right to your feelings, but when you are salt, when you are light, you need to be salt, whether you're in gumbo, grits, or, you know, <laughs> fish, or <laughs> um, whatever you're in. So you've got to still be salty, even in the midst of that. Um, you got to bring the salt to that situation. And so it's not to say that it's up to you to fix that situation or solve it, or that the outcome is based on you. But what God requires of you is to be that salt. So as long as you, um, you know, try to keep yourself in the place of drawing close to God and being um, mindful of who He is in your life, I think that's the I think that's the goal. That's you know that's the requirement um, to be light, to let your light so shine so that others can see your good work. So even if they're not treating you right. Um, your right response in their maltreatment um, will show that the God is in your life. Um, like we talked before, that light reveals things. Um, we talked about being in like dark places. Uh, like if you've been to a movie theater, <laughs> um, I'm not sure which theaters you go to, but I've been to some and they weren't they weren't they weren't that great. Um, but by the time you know the movie's over, you know you forget that you were sitting in this um, not great situation and the floor is sticky and the <laughs> movie theaters have come a long way. Um, but whatever. So the situation didn't change, but you were just so caught up in the movie that you didn't realize that the floor was sticky and what just touched my leg and, you know, um, <laughs> whose gum is this? But the situation didn't change, but after they turn the lights on, it reveals what's already there. And so the same way with our interaction with people, sometimes our light reveals things. And it's not something that we necessarily cause, but if that's what's in their heart and our light is exposing it, Sometimes they don't like it. Um, so it's not our job to vacuum the floor and clean the carpet and, you know, shampoo stuff. You just be light. What the effects of that light is, um, that's kind of not, not our call. So, you know, if they're feeling some type of way, that's something they need to work out with God. Um, but don't be a hit. Don't let your um, life be a hindrance to them seeing the light of Christ. Regardless of how they take it. Amen. That's good. Uh, I was thinking when you were talking, <clears throat> you were mentioning uh, how God said to you, don't let what you're in change who you are. Like today, and this is, there have been times I haven't done this. You know, driving slower because it's icy, it's slippery, 
My car has what they call regenerative braking. Uh, you can Google it. And it <laughs> but when you let off the gas, the car automatically starts to brake because it's electric. It starts charging itself. It start it fishtails slightly when it's icy. Um, so there's cars behind me, and traffic. You know, it's 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 traffic. It's it's snowing. It's icy. So you know, driving slow, take being careful. There's the cars like a few different times. Cars like right on my bumper, and it's like you can't let you know what's going on behind you. Like like my wife mentioned, you can't let what you're in change who you are. You can't let what's going on change your change your speed, change your direction, change your course because someone behind you is impatient or because someone is being impatient. You can't let them change, you know, my end goal, which is to make it home to my family, you know. But there have been times where if someone has gotten on my bumper, I have locked them up. I have just foot to the floor, brakes. Yeah. <laughs> or someone gets on you and you take off, you stomp it, you know. But you can't you can't let and though those are bad examples and thankfully, you know, we're here to um to, to live to tell about it. But yeah. it's it's not a wise move. Um yeah. but God is good. Yeah. <laughs> he protects us in our mess. <laughs> yeah, he does. But you can't allow what's going on around you to change you. And it, you know, this the simple analogy of driving and someone gets on you, even though you're in the slow lane, there's no one in the lane next to you, they just want you to move. You can't change who you are and your end goal and your destination because someone behind you is impatient or because someone doesn't understand, you know, I want to make it home safely, that's why I'm driving the speed in the sleet and rain. Because someone doesn't understand, I can't allow it to change the fact that I'm going to drive in a manner that I feel is safe, that I'm comfortable, and I'm that I feel I'm going to make it home. So the same thing with being salt and light, as my, as my wife already mentioned. We can't let things around us, situations, what's happened to us, you, you name it. I mean, everyone's got a story. Everyone's got things that have happened at some point in their life whether the, by their doings or you're just an innocent bystander. You can't allow that to change the fact that you are, you are salt, you are light. And salt and light have an intended purpose. Understand that God has an intended purpose for you. He's, he's made you to be salt, and salt has a purpose. This, this world needs salt. The salt, you know, back then was used to preserve. This world needs some preserving. Like the, the, the good moral things need to be preserved. Light is meant to shine and, and bring light to dark areas. This world needs light. So God has called us to be salt and light. This world needs it. And it's because we have a purpose. Be salt, be light. Look around the world. Where, where, could, where could there be more salt, more light? When you think of the dark areas in your job, in your family, different places, let your light shine. And people who don't want to be around the light, they'll move. And people who have a desire to change, they will. But just continue to be salt and light and read God's word and it will help you better know how to, how to better be salt and light. The Holy Spirit will correct you, will convict you, will help you to know what areas you need to improve in. But let's... Stay in a place where we can hear his hear his voice and know the things we need to work on, we need to correct, we need to not say or, or whatever. It, you know, he's he's here to help us because like I mentioned every week, mentioned in the beginning today, God has an intended plan and purpose for you. He desires you to see it through to completion. He desires us to do it well. He's equipped us with the tools we need to make it through to the end he's equipped you with everything you need now some you know skills some areas might need to think of tools some things might need sharpening some things might need to be cleaned up some things might you know what i mean just god has given you everything you need to accomplish the task he has set for you amen so we're going to wrap up for this week thanks for joining us um if this message blessed you um I'm glad 
And if you know somebody in your life that this makes you think of or think that it could encourage them, feel free to share it. That's why we make it public. Um, but thanks for joining us and for talking with us about salt and light. And just it's just a reminder to us um, through God's word of who we are, um, what our expectations are uh, from him, what he expects of us, and how we can better live that out. Because no one's arrived yet. <laughs> if so, we wouldn't be here. If we're still here, there's still something to be done. Um, and so thank God for his mercy, for his grace, and for another opportunity to get it right, to get it better. Um, and so I'm just going to close out in prayer, and we pray that you guys have a safe Christmas, um, a good New Year's. Uh, this will be our last. Yeah, this is it for the year. Yes. We'll, so <laughs> we'll, be back. we'll uh, resume uh, January 7th at 7.30 p.m. Tuesday. Yes. Um, so with that, Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you for watching over us and keeping us safe, bringing us to this point where we could do this. And thank you for bringing all of the listeners and viewers to the point where they could see this. Thank you for keeping us and protecting us, for watching over us. Um, thank you for sustaining us that we're still alive to hear your word. Um, Father God, please touch our hearts. Help us to be a good reflection.